Hey Man Testing fam, how's it going? In this video, we will begin our setup and installation for our Cypress testing framework. So let's take a look at what we will be covering in this video. So here we have a couple of things that we will be covering. First off, we're going to talk about the prerequisite that you will need to begin the setup and installation. After that, we're going to install Cypress using npm. So once Cypress is installed, we're going to run some pre-built tests that comes along when you first install Cypress. When our test will be running, we will take a look at the Cypress test runner and see how that works and what are some of the functionalities of Cypress test runner. And then at the end, we're going to add our npm script to run Cypress easily instead of keep running the npm Cypress command. Alright, so let's take a look at what are some of those prerequisites before you can install Cypress. So first off, there are some OS prerequisites. So you're going to make sure if you're using Mac OS that it's 10.9 and above. If you're using Ubuntu, it needs to be 12.04. And same thing for Fedora and Debian, you need to make sure that you match this version at the very minimum. And with Windows, you gotta make sure you're 7 and above. And the main thing is for Node.js, you need to first off have Node.js installed on your machine. And if it is installed, you need to make sure it's at least 10 or 12 and above. So I would just recommend for you to go with the latest version, which is 14 right now, to have that one installed so that you don't run into with any compatibility issues. So once you install Node, it will also install NPM for you, so you don't have to install that separately. Okay, so after you have all of this set up, we can go ahead and start installing Cypress on our machine. The first thing you need to do is open up your terminal. So it can be any terminal that you use and go to the directory where you want to install Cypress. Once you're there, just create a new folder. You can create a folder by doing mkdir. I'm going to create this one, call this one Cypress testing, and then I will cd into that folder. I'm going to do cd Cypress testing. All right, there you go. So I'm in that folder now. And then I'm going to initialize my npm package. So I'm going to do npm init dash y. Okay, so it created this package JSON with all of this information for me. So that's good. The next thing I'm going to do is install Cypress. Now to install Cypress, it's pretty easy. You just have to type in npm install and do Cypress dash dash save dev to save it in your dependencies. Now basically dev dependencies. So this will take a while. It will install the Cypress desktop application in your machine. And once this is installed, you will be able to open up the Cypress desktop app. So I'm just going to wait for this to be finished and then I will be back. All right, so Cypress is finally installed. Let me just scroll up to show you what exactly happened. So here, when we did npm install Cypress, what it did was it downloaded Cypress, then it unzipped Cypress. Now this is the Cypress desktop app that it downloaded. It unzipped that and then basically it finished the installation. And that took a while because the Cypress, I believe, is at roughly around 200 MB or something. So once it's downloaded, it unzipped it and then it completed the installation. All right, since the application is downloaded, let's take a look at how we can open it. So over here, it's saying that you can now open Cypress by running node modules when Cypress open. And yes, that's one way to do it. But easiest way to do is just doing npx Cypress open, which will do the same thing. It will actually go to the node modules and from the bin, it will open up Cypress open. So let's do that. I'm going to hit npx Cypress open. I'm going to hit enter. And just make sure you have the latest node in npm so that way you can actually use npx command over here. So here it will tell you that this is the first time we are using Cypress and the version I'm using is 6.5.0. So it's going to go ahead and I can basically just do the uh, verification and then it will open up Cypress in my machine over here. Okay, so it has verified the Cypress and now it's going to open up the Cypress app. All right, so this is open up the Cypress desktop app and let me just expand this so that we can get a better view of this. So to help us get started, Cypress already installed some example tests for you so that we can quickly run it and see if Cypress is working on a machine or not. I'm going to select here. OK, got it. And then from here, what we're going to do is try to run some of the tests right here. But before I do that, let's take a look at what this is. So this is the Cypress test runner. And here we can see all the tests that are listed over here. So we can see the folder names. It's integration test. And within that, we have the examples folder. And then we have all these spec files right here. Now, these spec files are your test files. And then over here on the right, we can see which browser it's going to open up our test in. So I have by default Firefox in my machine. I have Chrome, I have Edge, and then Electron it already comes with. So here I can open it in Firefox or I can open it in Chrome or Edge. So I'm just going to select Chrome here so that it opens in Chrome browser. And then it's telling me that I'm using version 88 right over here. And then on, over here, we have the runs. So if you're actually recording your test runs, it will show up here. And then you also have option for Cypress configuration, which is right over here in the settings. And we will not dive into that right now. We're simply going to go to our test and try to run one of the tests. So to run the test, I can simply click on that. So I'm going to click on actions at spec.js. As you can see here, it's trying to open up Chrome browser now. What this will do is spin up a Chrome browser. And let me see if that opens it up. 
Okay, so over here, it's spinning up the Chrome browser for me and you can see the test are loading. Okay, so it's going ahead and running through all of the test. So a couple things to notice here is, so on the right is the actual application that is under test. So it's going in and executing that and you can see the URL for that. It's example.cypress.io. And then over here on the left, you can see the actual commands that it's running. So basically these are all the commands that it's running. It's first doing the typing, then focusing on that particular element, then it's going through all the different commands right over here. And at the top, you can see the test status menu. So here I can see how long the entire test took. So it took 26 seconds. And then I can see how many of them ran. So 14 ran and zero filled right here. And then basically my actual application, which is right over here. And then I can see the actual viewport. So it ran in 1000 by 660 pixels right here. And this can all be configured in your uh, Cypress settings. But for now, this is the default that it comes along with. Now, if I need to, let's say, run the test again, I can simply click on run all test. So it will start running the test again for me. It will go in and kind of run the test. And so let's focus on this to see exactly what this is doing. And I'm going to just simply expand this so that we can have a better view. All right. So as you can see, it's really fast going in and it's checking through all of the items here. And then we can see it went through all the commands and then everything successfully passed. So one of the great feature of the Cypress test runner is when you click on a particular command, you can exactly see what happened when it actually went to that particular command. So for example, if I go to this clear here, so it is actually telling me that before what it did was it visited that command. So this was this page so it visited this page. And then it did the get on action clear. Now this get is that particular element. So if I go there, as you can see, it's highlighting this over here. So it goes to that element. Then from there, what it's doing is it's adding in the text. So here, if you notice, it added this text, which is clear this text. And now it's actually doing the clear command, which is right here. So it's doing a type first. It's first adding it this clear this text command, which is right here. Then it's doing a clear. So if I click on that, as you can see here, it cleared the command and then it's doing an assertion to make sure that the command or whatever the text we have there is now cleared. And the actual code for that is actually, this is how it looks. So it goes to the action clear. It does a type there. So it actually types in Cypress, uh, basically clear this text. And then it checks for that the text has this value, which is clear this text that it added over here. If I go back, so this thing, it's actually checks for that. And then it does a clear to make sure this is removed. And then it's checking for that the value is actually removed from there. Now we will look into how to write the test in the next video. But what I want to focus on is with Cypress test runner, you can actually time travel through your application state. So here I can kind of go back and see, okay, before this clear, what it was trying to do. So I can see here, here this, it was trying to type something that so can go back here. You can see right now it's email. So it's gonna uh, type in fake at mail.com. So here it actually added that. They did fake at mail.com. So it did that. Then I can see it's going to basically just try to do type uh, multiple other options, whatever it's over here. And it's kind of typing in through like alt key, shift key, and all those different keys. And it's kind of checking for that. And it's doing this expect assertion. And then I can check for that it's a disabled value. So here right now the field is not disabled. And it's doing an assertion on that to make sure that the field is actually disabled. So, but the key thing to remember here is I'm actually able to go back and take a look at what exactly happened when it ran through each and every one of the command. And this is the power of Cypress test runner. So it allows you to try and travel back to the previous state of your application when you're testing. And by default, Cypress keeps 50 test worth of snapshots and command data for time traveling. And this is something that you can set up in Cypress configuration. So it can be either increased or decreased depending on your own needs. Another thing with the Cypress test runner, what you can do is I can pin a particular command. So over here, let's say it's trying to type in so I can pin this here. And what this will do is if I just open up the console, I'm going to do right click inspect. And here in my console, I can see all this logs that got generated. So it's telling me the command that I pinned is the type command. What I actually typed in was there the fake at email.com and what, what it was actually applied to. So basically which HTML it was applied to and how many elements were there. So I can see all of that that actually got displayed right here by just pinning this. If I unpin that and pin something else, let's say this get command here, it's actually telling me that, okay, this is a get command. And what it got was this particular element and how many elements were there? There were only one element and the selector was action disabled. So you can see a really nice log of everything. And this is extremely helpful when you're actually debugging your code. All right. So as you can see, the Cypress test runner is extremely helpful and it kind of gives you everything that you need to know when the test is actually running. So your debugging time gets reduced a lot and you don't have to worry about, Hey, what exactly happened when I actually clicked on that particular element? What was the state of my application? Whether something passed or it didn't pass, you can actually review all of that using just the test runner 
without having to print a single line out. Okay, so now let's go back to the terminal and take a look at the folder that got generated when we installed Cypress. So here I'm just gonna close the Cypress runner. So the moment I close that, it closed out the desktop application. As you can see, it got closed out. And here I can open this up or the Cypress testing folder in any code editor that I want. So here I'm just gonna open it up in VS Code. So I have the shortcut which I can just do code dot and it will open up this folder in VS Code. So I'm just gonna wait for this to be open up and then we will go from there. Okay, so it has opened up the folder in VS Code and as you can see, it created this package JSON for us. Now this was the package JSON that we initialized and if I open that up, so here in the package JSON, the only dependency I have is Cypress. And this is really amazing because with Cypress, it's actually installing all the packages for us. So this is installing my um, BDD framework, it's installing my assertion library, it's installing all the mocking and stubbing just by installing the Cypress uh, library right over here. So I don't have to figure out, okay, which assertion library I need to use or which BDD framework I need to use just by installing Cypress, it's doing everything for us. So that's another great feature of Cypress that it makes your setup and installation really easy. Now another thing that we have is cypress.json. Now right now this is empty, but this is the configuration of Cypress that we can set it up. So here we're gonna look into it later on, but for now we're just gonna leave this the way it is. And in Cypress, right over here, we have a couple of folders. We have fixtures, we have integration folder, we have plugins, and we have support folder. So in the fixtures, you can add in all the Cypress related data. So here you can add JSON files, here you can add some images, and you can use them directly in your test by just calling in the fixture. And in our integration, this is where all the test lives. So here right now they have, we have this example folder and under the example folder, we have all the spec files. So in the next video, we're going to be creating our own spec file. So we're going to delete this entire thing that's here. And then we're going to create a spec file from scratch and explain you how we can create a new Cypress test from scratch. The next thing we have are plugins. So with Cypress, you can actually install some plugins to extend the existing Cypress functionality. And then in the support folder, we have custom commands that you can add in and directly use it in your test. And we will look into this also in one of our future videos. All right, so before we end the video, one thing we're going to do is add in our custom script to run our Cypress test. So right now we are running it using npx cypress open. So what we're going to do is we can just update this script over here and then I'm going to put this npx cypress open. Now I can just run my cypress test by doing npm test. So if I go back here, if I want to run my test, I'm just going to do npm test. Now, by the way, this is totally optional. You don't have to do this. And now it's actually going to go in and open up my cypress application. All right, so that's pretty much it for this video guys. Let me know in the comments below how you would rate Cypress installation and setup compared to other UI testing frameworks that you might have used in the past. In the next video, we will create our first Cypress test from scratch. So if you enjoyed this video guys, I would really appreciate it if you guys could support my work. The easiest is by subscribing to my channel and liking and sharing my videos. And you can also go to automationbro.com and subscribe to my mailing letter to get access to all my blog posts and latest updates. And if you have the financial means, you can also support me via Buy Me A Coffee website. All of this support guys will help me to keep making these videos for you all each week and to help you out in your development and testing journey as well. So I will add the links for all of this in the description below for you guys to check it out. That's it from my side guys. Thanks for watching. I will see you all in the next one.